Hey, let's get some practice factoring complex trinomials. I gave a bunch of examples in uh, my online course. This is what some of them look like. I'm going to do four of them here. So 42x squared minus 58x plus 20. First thing to look for, always look for a common factor. I also see that this one starts with a negative value, a negative coefficient in front of the x squared term. It's uh, nice to clear that negative out, and also I see that each one of these is divisible by 2, but uh, not divisible by anything else. So I'm going to divide out a negative 2, factor that out from each term. So negative 2 factored out of this negative 42 leaves me with 21x squared. Here I'm going to end up with positive 58 divided by 2 is 29, and then I still have that x. And 20 divided by negative 2 is uh, negative 10. So now I have a slightly smaller trinomial to work with, and I keep that negative 2 out front here the whole time. So I'm going to use my square brackets. Inside of here, what I'm looking for are two numbers that are going to add together to give me positive 29, and they're going to multiply together to give me 21 times negative 10, which is negative 210. I'm just going to work down the side here while I think about that. So two numbers that multiply together to give me negative 210. One of them will be negative and one's positive, and we'll figure that out in a minute. So you can start with some uh, really easy ones if you want, 210 times 1, but because the difference between the values is going to be 29, one's positive and one's negative, uh, I'm going to end up with something a little closer together. So maybe I'm going to start looking around the well, what's 21 times, what would be 21 times 10? That's only 11 apart. That's not very good. 14 times 15. Okay, this one's dangerous because 14 times 15 is 210, and they add together to give you uh, 29, but my two numbers have to be multiplying to give me negative 210. One of these numbers has to be negative. In fact, it'll have to be the smaller number that's negative. So I'm this is a tempting place right here because you might think, ooh, I found it. But in fact, I've got negative 14 and positive 15, which only add up to 1. What I'm looking for are two numbers that add together to give me 29, but multiply to give me negative 210. So let's keep looking. Uh, what if I had 42 and 5, and that would be negative 5? I should make all my smaller numbers negative there to be really clear. Uh, let's, that works for multiplying, but for subtracting, 42 minus 5 is 37. That's, those are too far apart. And you can try a couple more. 70 and negative 3. That's not going to work. Uh, I'm going to cut this one in half. 35 and negative 6. And this is looking good. 35 times 6 is 210. 35 minus 6 is 29. Those are the numbers I'm looking for. Those ones were pretty hard to find. That's the way it is sometimes. So 21x squared. Now here I'm taking this apart into two pieces, plus 35x and minus 6x. That's the 29x minus 10 and close my bracket. Let me just underline this here. This piece right here is the decomposition of that piece. It should, if you were to simplify this, you'd get back to what you had before. So we're separating that out. Uh, negative 2 times, and now, I need another color here, I'm going to take these two pieces together and these two pieces together and factor each of them separately. So the first thing I'm going to look at, these first two, 21x squared and 35x, well, I see that there's a factor of 7x in each one of those, which leaves me here with 3x and leaves me here with positive 5. Okay, and now I'm going to want another one of these 3x plus 5s over here when I factor this guy. But I see some negative signs in there, so I'm going to be careful to factor those out so they don't end up in this binomial. So negative, and I'm going to factor out a 2. That leaves me with, right here, 3x. Yeah, that's good. That's what I want. Negative 10 divided by negative 2 is positive 5. If I did not end up with the same binomial here and here, I've made a mistake. They should be the same. If one is the negative of the other, I should take a negative sign out of the binomial and put it in front of this value out here. Okay, negative 2 times, well, I'm going to do this all in brackets here again, 
3x plus 5, I'm going to factor out of each of these big terms. That leaves me with 7x minus 2. And usually then, in this larger version, we wouldn't write out these square brackets, so you would usually see this as 2 times 3x plus 5 times 7x minus 2. Uh, and these might be in a different order. If you ended up with an answer with that was, say, one of these binomials was, let's uh, say, 6x plus 10, then that's because you haven't factored the 2 out, and it's a good practice to factor it out uh, all the way to the end. It's not 100% necessary for our purposes, but it's a good idea, uh, and then we'll all be able to compare things pretty easily. All right, let's do a few more. A little faster, this one. 24x squared plus 18x minus 6. Again, I have a common factor. This time it's a big one. I've got 6. This is 3 times 6 and this is 4 times 6. So I can take a common factor of 6, positive 6, out of each item here. This leaves me with 4x squared plus 3x minus 1. I want two numbers that add together to give me 3, positive 3, and they multiply together to give me negative 4, negative 1 times 4. So I want a large positive number and a small negative number. And you know what? I can see those ones right away. Positive 4 and negative 1 multiply to give me negative 4, and they add together to give me 3. So let's decompose 3x into plus 4x minus 1x, and I'll write the 1 there. And then we have minus 1 at the end. Factoring this is 4x times x plus 1, so that's factoring the first part here. And then the second part, I'm going to want an x plus 1, so I'm going to take out a negative 1, and I'm left with then x plus 1 in the second binomial. So that's this part here has become that after doing that common factoring. And now I've got two binomials the same, so 6 times bracket x plus 1. I'm going to factor it out of each part. x plus 1 factored out of this gives me 4x. x plus 1 factored out of this gives me negative 1. And again, I don't need those brackets, and I won't write them next time. x plus 1, 4x minus 1. Okay, two down, two to go. Let's try negative 70x squared minus 8x plus 8. Common factor here, I'm going to take out that negative. This is 2 times 2 times 2, so is this. 70, though, I know is 2 times 35. I'm only, only going to get one 2 out of those, so we'll leave it like that. 35x squared, watching my minus signs, this is going to now be a plus 4x, and this is a minus 4. I'm looking for two numbers. They're going to add together to give me positive 4. They're going to multiply together to give me 35 times negative 4, which is negative 140. Okay, so the numbers, one is positive and one's negative, because they multiply to give me a negative value, and they're pretty close to each other, because the difference between them here is going to be 4. So I'm going to try 140 is, let's see, it's uh, 7 times 20, and the uh, the smaller number would be negative. Mm, that's not going to work. Those are too far apart. Um, what about 14 times negative 10? That multiplies fine. And yes, it adds fine as well. So let's decompose 4x into 14 and negative 10. So here we have 35x squared. 4x is now plus 14x minus 10x. And then I still have my minus 4 hanging around at the end. Negative 2 times. Factoring this, I see a 7x. And that leaves me in here with uh, 5 times x plus 2. And over here, again, I want that 5x plus 2 at the end, so I'm going to factor out a negative 2. That'll leave me here with 5x, just like that one. See, negative 10x divided by negative 2 is 5x, and negative 4 divided by negative 2 is plus 2. I've got the same binomial in both places. That's good. And 
Now I promised I wasn't going to write my square brackets the next time, so factor out a 5x plus 2, and you're left with 7x minus 2, and that's the factored form of that one. All right, last one. 9x squared minus 71x minus 90. I can see this one is not divisible by 9. It's not even divisible by 3, so there's nothing to, that I can common factor out of everything here. So now I'm looking for two numbers. They're going to add together to give me negative 71, and they're going to multiply together to give me 9 times negative 90, which is negative 180. So a positive number and a negative number, they multiply to give me a negative, and the bigger one is the negative number, because when I add them, I have a negative uh, sum. You know what? I see this one right away. 81, negative 81, and 10, positive 10. The difference is negative 71, but they multiply to give me 810. That one worked out really nicely. So let's decompose this one. Negative 71 becomes negative 81x plus 10x. And then I'm left with a negative 90 at the end. So there's the decomposition right there. Continuing, 9x. Here I'm left with x minus 9, and I'm going to want the same thing, so I'm going to factor out a positive 10, and I'm left with x minus 9 from the second portion. That worked out really well. Two binomials the same. We'll factor it out from the 9x and the 10, and I'm left with x minus 9 times 9x minus 10. Okay, there's four examples of factoring complex trinomials. Three of them had common factors to pull out ahead of time, and uh, one of them was pretty tricky to find the factors. I hope that helps, and uh, go ahead and ask me some questions.